both of blades. Hello YouTubes, and this is my first tier list video for all of the characters in Spell Slingers. So we are going to rank each of the characters based on what I believe to be their likely win rate in the meta. And we're going to rank them from, of course, best to worst, S, A, B, C, D, A, N, F, if applicable. So the first we are going to go ahead and start. We are going to put a Johnny in S tier. A Johnny is S tier because I made it really good. Let's be honest. He would probably be C or D tier, but the win rate in the deck is super high. So a Johnny S tier, easy. Angrith. Angrith is either probably high B, low A. Angrith can go really powerful and just uh, have a lot of amount of sneak effects and flyers. And uh, if they start. It's just really, really strong. Ashox F tier, no explanation, not given one. Yep. Chandra, uh, A tier. It's very powerful. You can kill your opponent, surely use turn five. Sometimes you're really lucky, turn four. Powers a large amount of bird. Trying to finish out the game really fast. Flame Shot's a very powerful card. Firecrafter's pretty mid, but uh, the Fire Elemental is also very strong, too. Davriel, uh, I'd put him in A tier. He has a very strong linear game plan. You just want to get to your Death Shadows, counters a lot of decks very well. And Death Shadows also have a combo build with the Invisibility Cloak and Heat Shimmer, which doesn't actually require a lot of slots to dedicate to, to do a large amount of damage very fast. And Davriel can just end the game really fast and has one of the strongest one drops in the game in a 3-3 Trampler that's super easy to activate. Domri, we are going to put an A tier. Domri plays a lot like a uh, Nissa Light, but uh, someone did win the last tournament that we held with Domri, and Domri is just a very strong deck. Uh, Barbarian class can work pretty well with it, but just a straight Tarmogoyf line could be really good. You could also do a top end build. Dice Crater build is mostly spawn fall into the wayside because um, you get field nukes, you don't really have any backup plan, and then you'll be stuck at 6 mana or 7 mana and never drop crater hooks. Zombie's a really good lot wave type of deck. Drist. Drist is, uh, I'd put Drist in here. It's probably going to get flack on that, but uh, Drist just feels like it's, it's trying to do a lot with the legendaries trying to be a really aggressive deck, but the, the nerf to Guinevere, where it doesn't have Trample, and uh, just a lot of legendaries don't feel better than just playing good tempo plays. And also Drist, in terms of green-white decks, I feel like a Johnny is just a much stronger build because of a lot of the kin color loops and stuff. Drist can be really good, and you could totally just play Drist, but uh, Drist doesn't have the greatest Gar Garrick matchup because Garrick can almost always go under Drist, and can definitely go over the top of Drift, unless he's running like Coach P, Dave Judgments, and stuff like that. Derek's S tier, he's just really good. He can end the game super fast. Back of Plan, Death Shadows, Silent Strikes. Very good ladder climber deck, and uh, he is counterable, but he's very, very powerful. So we're definitely putting him S tier here. Gideon, I'm sorry, but uh, you're, you're D tier. Uh, everything that all the, even just the decks that I've shown, uh, the characters that have been shown so far just do your game plan better. And while you can do a really good fair fight type of deck, you're arguably just not that good. Uh, and you pet her off with your card advantage very early. You could try and make like a worse version of control, but why wouldn't you just play a better version of control? Uh, Jace, let's see. A lot of these just feel like it could be A or B. I'm gonna put Jason B tier. B, uh, B tier for uh, like the Cerulean Drake, uh, Bag of Tricks type of deck. It's uh, it's really good if it doesn't get answered, but uh, it has a really bad Derek matchup, and a lot of other matchups are just 50 50. The Laboratory Man main matchup uh, it could be really good against like decks that don't try and attack you as much, like it's really good against like control type decks, it can be good against fairy, it can be good against like uh, Sarah. 
but we'll put him in B tier because he is matchup dependent, and some of the time he could just wind up feeling like he has nothing the entire game. Uh, Kyrie, we're gonna put in B tier. Uh, I feel like it's on par with Angrith. It has a similar like plan. He attacks a lot of evasive creatures. You trigger off for missions. You can do a control plan, but her control plan is just uh, it's a little bit weaker than some of the other control level plans. And control isn't in a particularly good spot right now in the meta. Her aggro bow can be really good, but it's very prone to removal. Kiora. Uh, I'd put Kiora in A tier. It's, uh, it's basically in the similar line to Galmary, where it feels like you're playing like a, a less good Nissa deck, but um, a lot of the time. Yora can do some interesting stuff with like Mutagen and just get a lot of triggers off that to get a lot of buffs and of course get the Leviathans. The Leviathans don't feel as strong as they were when the game initially released and even just a couple months ago because uh, turn 10 or turn mana is actually pretty high bar to get the one card and the game plan of Kiora basically has to be a tempo or bust. And a lot of her tempo-based effects aren't good against, like, Garrick. Showgame is probably one of the worst cards you play against Garrick. But you do get access to running, like, Negate. And also the top end from the Leviathan. So Kiora is still probably a solid A-tier deck. Liliana, A-tier, easy. Reanimator strategy is just ridiculous. Uh, it wouldn't be S-tier if it was with a slightly higher consistency. It really doesn't need much to be tier 0. And the nerfs that they've done to the deck effectively don't do anything. Liliana is uh, easily an A-tier deck. Because uh, you could just grind ladder with it, win most of your games, and then go up. But once you hit about 3,000 points, it's probably going to just stagnate and you're not going to need anywhere else. Uh, we're putting here an A-tier. The Barbarian deck's just really strong. It's very good for laddering. And the Moreland Hunt decks can do a really good grind game, and ironically, can counter the Barbarian list a lot better. It doesn't come doing a lot of beats here, deck. Um, but I'm not dropping anyone, so we'll see. Uh, I really feel like the Ace here decks are all pretty decent to climb with if you're looking to climb on ladder or just to hit early, like a mythic. Some of the other ones have a little bit of rockier scars, and of course, the Ace tier decks are really, really powerful. Which brings us to, of course, Nissa, arguably the best slinger in the game. Nissa has a lot of ways to be built, but she is just insanely, ridiculously powerful. You just get bonus for ramping. She gets to run Strahd combo as a backup. Uh, Crush Worms, turn five, followed by a Critter Hook, which usually leads GG. And all of her signatures are extraordinarily powerful. Draga Druid probably should be nerfed in that it's got really good stats and it just draws cards. Zion also been buffed, but he's also just really good too. Even as just 4-4 trampler on like turn three sometimes can be pretty good. This is just overwhelmingly very, very powerful and you can't really go wrong with that for going for ladder climbing. Uh, Rao we're gonna put in B tier. He can get some really crazy starts. His matchup versus Garrick is usually not good. His matchup versus Davrio is usually not good matchup versus a lot of the A tier decks is relatively 50-50 or worse. Uh, against like Liliana, it should be favored, but you really need to get like your unsummons or something, or Liliana can just take over the game. And if they run text, then you just never get to play the game. Sarah. Sarah's a hard one to grade. Uh, I mean, I did win a tournament with her, but I can't really say that her match, like her matchup against Garrick is Insanely good. It's like ridiculously good. The matchup against Mahiri is pretty good. She struggles against Liliana. She's really good against like, Yora. Yora does pressure you. She's really good against almost all the beef here next to you. The route can go over it She's decent against Chandra. Um, and I'm, I'm hesitant to put her in S tier. Uh, I would put her in A tier. She's really good against all of the beef here and below. And she's also really good against both the A tiers. She's just not the best against Nissa, but she can beat Nissa too, to be clear. Soren is a D tier. Unfortunately, he's just not particularly good uh, at what he does. A lot of the vampires aren't actually very strong, and 
Soren just uh, isn't really. You can win with him, but it's it feels like you're just putting your weight on yourself to actually try and win. To fairy, I'm actually gonna put him in C tier, which feels very. Uh, it feels not correct. But honestly, Teferi actually struggles with a lot of the aggro decks. Teferi has almost no chance of beating this if they're playing OTK. Teferi has virtually no chance of beating a Johnny once they start looping and just big infinitely stronger reliquary or restoration angels and a bunch of other strategies. Just uh, like Chandra can just usually beat down Teferi before they get started. Domri can do a similar thing. Uh, Kiora has her unblockable dudes. And it uh, just feels like Teferi, he used to be like ridiculously overpowered, but it's it's so easy to play against him that I can't really put him in a tier with all of the premier aggro decks or decks that just don't play a fair game. Vivian, I, I feel like I have to put her in C tier. She doesn't really feel focused. Like she doesn't really have a plan where she just wants you just you can play a curve out game and it's good but uh then you lose out to like death shadows you can still sometimes get under from chandra you don't really have any way to beat davriel when they draw the nuts sarah almost always beats you Rao can sometimes go over you you have basically just scooped to liliana so unfortunately i put her in c tier roscoe we're actually gonna put a tier roscoe is really really strong she's just not really represented much in the meta because a lot of Garrick is better. And uh, we feel like, I feel like I have way too many A tiers. Some of these, a uh, couple of these might have to go down. I think I'll put Kiora in B tier actually, uh, because it's, these are all pretty much combo and aggro decks. So they all pretty much can beat Kiora a lot of the time. Uh, Domri, Domri's pretty good. Domri, I think, uh, I think the rest are probably okay. Yangling is, uh, Yangling's D tier. Yangling is really hard to make work. It doesn't feel particularly good to use Yangling, and nobody's really found a build that actually can adequately win. But I feel like this is pretty pretty close to what I would say. Uh, these three decks are just absurdly strong. I'd even potentially put. Um, I might just think Sarah could be. It's really high. It's really high A. Liliana, it's solid A. I can't really see it being higher because, uh, once again, it does need to actually hit the combos with some degree of consistency and maybe one or two cards off of doing that. I've just never really been that impressed with Domri. It just it feels like it, it used to be my main deck, and it's pretty strong, but Nissa is arguably doing it better just every single time. Uh, I keep losing to Chandra sometimes in ladder. My opponent draws the knots. I gotta put Chandra A tier. Uh, and in terms of like premier aggro decks, Chandra is easily one of the premier aggro decks that you can be running. Though Nahiri probably has a more consistent win rate. Frost is underrepresented 100%, so uh, it feels fine putting it A tier. It might be mid B tier. But uh, like these D's and F, I mean, that's what I put as the terrible four for the tournament that unfortunately was canceled due to lack of membership and participation, didn't have enough players, but they pretty much were the worst. Also, I just outright do not like Ashiok, and that's why she is below a tier below the worst. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please give your opinion on what you think of this tier list in the comments below. And have a day, peace. So I put my mask on, keep the two of me, gotta keep the night high. Flex a Louis V, yeah, I keep my cash on. Stick it true to me, I never had a gas off. I'ma pop off, yeah, I said I'll pop off.